So our hope as a foundation is to be able to provide law enforcement, first responders, and school district personnel with information about lessons learned. And the reason I'm sharing this story is on April 20th, some things happened that I can't explain, but I just have to accept. So when I come out of my office, my worst nightmare becomes a reality because about 75 yards down the hallway, there's a gunman coming towards me. I think the goal is to just help people that go through similar situations. I can remember 20 years ago, 21 years ago, people reaching out to me and I made a comment 20 plus years ago that I just joined a club in which no one wants to be a member and so when these events happen uh, I could reach out and just say this is what we've learned. And the narrative that came out afterwards is these poor kids were marginalized and they were bullied and again I'm not going to stand before you to say there was no bullying going on column by but what scares me is the narrative out there is that's the reason they did it and that's not the reason they did it. You know, as John McDonald says, it's not to scare, it's to prepare. And I think we're doing a good job of preparing people, whether it be, you know, law enforcement, school officials, churches. And it, it's, it's something that we want to pay for it because Columbine had a major effect on a lot of people. Active shooter is something that we talk about a lot, but we also talk about an all hazards approach. So what are the questions you should be asking yourself? Who are the people you should be connecting with? How do you network so that it's a community response instead of an individual response? And how do we truly look to the events of the past, like Columbine, but others, uh, so that we don't remake the same mistakes that have been made in the past? This is where it took place. You can tell where Tiffany went down right here. So today we have uh, Deputy Chief A.J. DeAndrea. He was a first responder, one of the first in Columbine, has attended or been a part of several other critical shooter events and so he does all types of training both nationally and internationally. There's a staircase that goes up here I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Down here where that box is is where Philip was. We'd actually found that box put it under his feet to try to keep the blood flow back towards his torso as he was laying on the ground all right. You know we hear these things and you think you know that's not gonna happen here. It's not gonna happen in my school. It's not gonna happen in my community and to see that I've been in three Right? My daughter's been in one. I didn't get the chance to talk about my nephew was at Arapahoe High, right? And so these things happen, and we have an obligation, whether it's as a parent or as a cop, and everything in between, to own our role and play a part in it. I'm at the end of my game. This is the new generation here. You gotta be smarter, you gotta be stronger, you gotta be faster, you gotta make quicker decisions. You've got to learn from our mistakes so that you can do it better because our community needs you. It's part of my promise to continually speak, anyone that's willing to listen, to let them hear. And if you notice today, I talked more about our failure points than I did about what we did right. So that the people in the audience can understand their role and see what's important, learn from our mistakes so that they can do it better. The building itself is 17,500 square feet. And then as he's leaving, the only thing that set an alarm off was they saw him taking pictures from the outside of the building. Uh, Lieutenant Brian Murphy, he was the sh first officer on scene at the Sikh Temple shooting. He was shot 15 times and does the same thing. He shares his story and his experience and he has just a, a never give up attitude. Inspirational and feels a, a duty to give back. When that, when that shot goes in you, it's the, everybody thinks it's going to be pain, but it's not. It, it, when you think about the physics of being shot, what is it? It's I mean, when the explosion that superheats a piece of metal and it comes out the end. So what happens when it hits you? It's a super hot piece of metal. So but for me, that was that was the first feeling. It was like that burns. I, I think it's important to ground officers and remind them that bad things do happen. But most importantly, take care of yourself, take care of your family, and. More than anything, the more people are trained, the more information that's out, the better off officers are going to be. 
It was really informative. I enjoyed it. It was a good training. Uh, Phenomal gives you a lot of different perspectives, things you don't think about, especially uh, going at high-risk situations. We do events like this, but we also do regional events. Our hope is that no school district or law enforcement or first responder agency doesn't have access to this information. Sometimes we do smaller tactical trainings, like we have several courses coming up for law enforcement, single officer response, and then we'll do school district events where we talk about threat assessment, threat mitigation. We also do trainings for school boards around what questions should you be asking yourself about what's going on within your school district. How do you know? How do you leverage the right resources to make sure your kids and staff are safe? It kind of reinvigorates you and gets to you know why why you're here.